Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. If you saw my earlier PS Vita review and video, you learned probably two things. Number one, I forgot to load the Game Boy Advance BIOS on my device and so they weren't running. And a lot of people gave me good comments on that one. And two, I complained about the fact that using PS4 Remote Play is not very fun because there's no L2 and R2 buttons. Well, a lot of people gave me comments about that one too and said, hey, just go buy a case that has L2 and R2 on it. So I took your advice and I did that exact thing. So today I'm gonna show off two different cases for the PS Vita that allows you to have L2 and R2 buttons. And as you can see here, I bought a PS Vita 2000 as well as grips for this one. And this one's a little bit slimmer and doesn't cover the face. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Now I spent some time looking around and trying to find the best grips for my device, and it sounds like Hori cases are the best, but they are really expensive right now. They cost about $150 on eBay, and so I don't think that's worth it. So I went to this other website, playasia.com, and they have all sorts of Japan-related accessories, including these grips. So the PS Vita 1000 grips were $40, and the 2000 grips were $30. And honestly, I was a little worried at how long shipping was going to take. So for the 1000 grips, I actually paid a little bit in expedited shipping. I think I paid $10 for shipping and I ordered on a Sunday and they arrived at my house on a Tuesday. So that was overkill. That was super fast. And then the other ones, I just did regular shipping. I think I paid $6 for that and they arrived within a week as well. So I would say, don't worry about the expedited shipping. They ship really fast. Now you can see the case here is just kind of like a hanger pack thing. It just feels kind of cheap. I imagine this was probably very cheap in Japan back in the day and they're just kind of ripping us off here on the Western side. But either way, I'm happy with the price compared to the $150 Hori grips. So we'll see how these play. So my first impression on this grip is that it's very bulky. It just seems like it already is a large handheld device and I haven't even put the device in it. The trigger buttons themselves have a sort of hinge mechanism to them, and honestly they're not as springy as I would have liked them to be. I assume they're supposed to emulate the PS4 controller, but they just feel a little bit mushier than I would expect with a PS4. It has these tiny little clips that hold the front in place, and honestly I'm a little worried that I'm going to break these at some point, so I'm really trying to baby it here. So when you pull the triggers themselves, you can see there's a little bit of an action there. It's just a very simple lever mechanism here. And honestly, I'm a little amazed that something so simple can fix this issue of not having my fingers registered. Because I've tried using my fingers for the L2 and R2, and it's just a pain in the butt. It doesn't feel natural, and half the time when I push it, it actually doesn't register. So I'm really hoping that this does the trick. So another fragile point, as you can see here, is the hinge that covers the faceplate itself. I don't think this is a big deal as long as you have the case actually secured, but at the same time, I'm a little worried that at some point these are going to break off and it's going to be impossible to repair that in any way, which means I'm just going to have to buy a whole new case for $40. And I gotta say, my PS Vita fits nice and snugly in this. It is really meant for this device and it fits really well. So to secure it, you just push down on each of the little clips and they make a satisfying little click sound. Okay, I gotta say, once it's securely in place, it actually feels really nice. It feels really secure. It's not like moving around loosely in the case or anything like that. It feels nice and tight. It's gonna take some getting used to with these shoulder buttons and trigger buttons, because honestly, the R1 and L1 buttons are nice and clicky, whereas these trigger buttons, they're kind of mushy and they don't feel very responsive. And I'm really not a fan of these hinge triggers. I wish they were a little bit more clicky. Overall, access to your face buttons and the other buttons are a little bit harder to reach just because you have that plastic shell in the way, but it's not a deal breaker. So let's start up PS4 Remote Play and see how this works. Okay, here I am jumping into Bioshock Infinite, and I gotta say, it works really well. Like every time I push the button, it responds. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. So in that sense, it works well. The only thing I don't like about it is that the recoil feels a little bit slow. For example, when I take my finger off the trigger, it takes a fraction of a second to recognize that I've taken it off because these mushy buttons are not very clicky. But you can see me playing here and it feels great, it feels fine. It is gonna take me some time to adjust to the feel of this altogether because it feels like a really like flat controller. It's hard to explain, but it doesn't have that roundedness to it that fits in your hand perfectly like a regular Xbox One controller or a PS4 controller. 
these little nubs in the back they they're good you know it does give you a better grip but they don't account for your pinkies so your pinkies don't fit in there and so i have kind of these wayward pinkies when i'm playing with it not a huge deal but if you have hands that are bigger than mine and i think i have like medium sized hands you may have issues with this feeling too small and too cramped but i think with a bit of practice this can be really ideal you just have to kind of get used to the feel of it you can see here i'm playing this game just fine now, one of the unfortunate things about this controller is that it does not have L3 and R3 buttons like the Hori case does. So, like, for example, with this game, I can't use the run button or the sprint button other than touching the pad itself. So here we are with Last of Us Part 2, and it's working fine as well. You know, I'm using one button to zoom in and the other one to shoot, and they feel good. It is kind of interesting that when you look at the top where it shows you where you're pushing buttons on the case, they're laid out in a flat line as opposed to a grid style with most of the other games. And I don't know what, what's up with that when it comes to Last of Us Part Two. I have never played this game using the Vita, um, but that's just something I noticed. And you know these grips, they give you access to everything you need, your volume button, your charging port, your headphone jack, your SD card, all of those things are easily accessible. It definitely doesn't make your PS Vita look as nice and sleek as it does without this case. But in general, you know, you're protecting your device, and on top of that, it's much more ergonomic. The honest truth is it's a compromise, you know, if you're okay with having a little bit of extra bulk and a little bit of extra weight in order to use your L2 and R2 buttons easily, this is going to be the solution for you. If you don't want to add any extra space to your device itself, then you're just going to have to use the back touchpad. All right, let's move on to the other one. This is the PS Vita 2000 version. I bought the white one because it was like $10 cheaper than the black one, but I think the black one would have looked a little bit better on my device. But at the end of the day, I didn't think it was worth that extra $10. So obviously this one is much more simple in design. There is no front face for it. But you can see here with the triggers, they don't register on the front like they do with the other one. I can't actually visibly see them pushing out on the mechanism. When I hold my finger there and I push on the trigger, I can feel it, but overall I don't actually see it happening. So this one you actually just snap into place on the sides of it there. To be honest, I was a little worried I was gonna scratch up my PS Vita, but it seemed to connect okay. And it actually feels very secure in there. And just like with the other case, it does add some bulk to it, but it feels a little bit more streamlined, you know, because there's no front panel, it just makes it feel like everything's in the back. Now it has that same hinge mechanism on the triggers, but honestly, they feel more responsive. They're a little bit more clicky. They're still mushy, don't get me wrong, but they are definitely a little bit more responsive. So when comparing them, I figured that the PS Vita 1000 was gonna be way bulkier, but honestly, when you line them up next to each other, they're about the same amount of bulkiness. I was surprised to find that. You can see here on the side profile, they're almost the exact same size when you put these cases on. I really like the fact that this one doesn't have a front plate. It really makes me feel more connected with my device itself. Whereas with the other one, you can just see all that bulk on the front there. And honestly, it makes the analog sticks feel a little bit more recessed and I don't really like that feeling. Whereas here you can see that everything is just nicely lined up. Okay, so let's test out this one. All right, here we are with Bioshock Infinite again. And it's a strange feeling, but it feels like the analog sticks are pushed out a little bit more because of that lack of the faceplate. So it's also a kind of an awkward feel that I just need to get used to. Honestly, if I'm switching between these two devices and I have cases on both of them, I'm gonna have a hard time because it's just a little bit different feeling. I think that the 1000 case is a little bit more balanced. But at the same time, this 2000 case feels much more responsive. When I push it, it seems to click back a little bit more quickly. Okay, I've spent a lot of time talking about bulk, so let's talk about weight at this point. So the original PS Vita 2000 was 219 grams. You can see here weight, it's 294 grams, so about 75 to 80 grams difference. And then the Vita 1000 was 260 grams, but you can see it goes up almost a full 100 grams to 358, 359 grams. So the 1000 case is definitely heavier than the other one, and because the 1000 is already heavy, you're looking at a significant weight difference between the two. Okay, so going back to the 2000 case here, you can see all of the ports are readily available, just like on the 1000 case. And these clips here on the sides really do keep it secure. It's actually kind of hard to get it out of the case after you've got it in the case. You kind of have to pull the case to the side a little bit and then pop it out. And I really don't like the feeling of doing that because I felt like I was going to break some of those clips. But like I mentioned before, I do think that these triggers are a little bit more responsive. They're still mushy, but they do feel a little bit better. 
and it gives you full access to the back panel here, so if you need to use the L3 and R3 buttons, they're still readily available. Now, like I mentioned before, the face panel on this PS Vita 1000 does add a little bit of bulk to the front, and that does change your user experience just slightly. But overall, between this one and the 2000 series grips, this one feels a little bit more balanced in the hands. And you have access to the back panel as well, just like with the 2000 grips. Okay, so in summary, you know, we're in a weird place now. It's 2021 at this point, and it's harder to find PS Vita accessories. And I think those Hori accessories are just going to get more and more expensive as time marches on. So I think this is a good, cheap alternative. And I'll leave links to these down below my video. But let me know what you think. Do you have a PS Vita? Do you have these grips? Or are there some other brands that you would recommend over these? As always, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you found this helpful for you. And I'll be making more PS Vita videos in the future, so be on the lookout for that. Alright, take it easy. We'll see you next time. Happy gaming.